Hey people, welcome back to Delvoy's Garage. Right, tonight I fancy a little bit of painting. Um, we saw the tubes done, the old baffles, still sound in the business. Uh, just looking inside, the lock nuts are still in place. Uh, should I lose one of them or should they come loose? I'm just going to weld them in. Bzzz, that'll stop it. But so far they're fine. Both in place and sound in the biz, as you could hear on the video. Uh, right, tonight, just like I said, I fancied a bit of painting. And I'm going to paint this at some point because I think I've expressed my views already on this here. Denim. I think that's the most ridiculous marketing thing I've ever heard. Hey, let's paint your bike half as much as we should and then charge you the same money. When you buy a bike in matte colours, denim, whatever, bless denim, that's all that about. When you buy a bike that's not in a proper gloss finish, uh, they sell it to you on the basis that it's dark custom and it's cool. Yeah, it's okay if you want that, but you should pay a bit less for it because it costs them infinitely less. A lot of the time, I don't even know if this is paint. It's just an electrostatically applied coating. I don't think it's proper paint. Uh, so I'm going to paint the bike. I don't quite know what yet. I haven't really come up with a solution. I'm still in the process of transferring it structurally to change it to the style I want. The built wells, they're going brilliantly. I love the riding position. It's just a business. Uh, the pipes sound great now. Proper little crackly sound. And it's, it's running fine. Uh, the air filter, that's great. The cover's working. You get a lovely little induction whistle when you nail it, which is nice. And uh, everything else is really working all right. I've got some pipe wrap on the way. Uh, that's for a few days' time. I don't like these. <laughs> Again, here's Harley with their great names. Buckshot uh, heat shields. Hey, a heat shield. Let's drill holes in so it doesn't shield so much heat. That's clever. So anyway, these are coming off because I kind of hate them. I think they just look a bit sad, really. It's a bit cowboys and Indians. So they're coming off. I'm going to do a nice pipe wrap and I've got some special wrap coming some really cool stuff for you so when that when that comes you'll see that I'll do that in a day or two but for the moment I think when I do paint this one thing I like about the majority of Harleys they paint front mud guard rear mud guard fender whatever and the tank they very rarely paint the side panels they usually gloss black and on these <laughs> they're denim and I don't like it I just think it looks pants so tonight I'm going to paint that and the battery cover the other side in gloss black. It's a really simple one-off. I'm just going to layer it up with about five or six coats of gloss black. Uh, and then once that's sunk off for a week or two, and it's all finished shrinking and drying. Because it's going to be air-dried rattle campaign. I've long since got rid of my compressor and spray gun. Can't be bothered with all that mess. Never have enough painting to do, so rattle cans are great. And I'm going to show you, you can get an absolutely amazing finish on something like this. Just with rattle cans so you can do it yourself. And that means taking these off, giving them a proper clean, scotching them up with a scotch bright, and then shooting them. So I'm going to show you that tonight. So stick around, let's get them off. First job is whip the seat off. Pretty straightforward, one screw. Seat off first. That out of the way. and then it's down here to the side panel. The battery covers held on in the simplest possible way you can imagine. It's ever so easy. Underneath here there's just a little kind of hook that a slot in the tinware just sits on. There's no fasteners, it just sits on a hook. And up here at the top it's just held in with two of these. Pop them out the frame, pull them off towards you. That is as simple as it is. And then that just lifts. There you go. You get a screwdriver, little. When you're going to paint them, obviously, you get yourself a Torx and they just unscrew and lift off, which I'll do in a minute. So there's the first one. Let's take the oil cover off. Okay. You see to pop a little tiny thin screwdriver underneath, slip it under the tin. Easy for you to say. And it just slips off. Like that. That's it. There's no fastener there. That just snaps over a little rubber thingy. And there's a cover on that. But it's got a little clip missing. So I've got a spare one of those. That'll be clipped on properly afterwards. That should just be clipped on there. 
uh, and I will do that after. And that's it. Now you can ride the bike like that pretty much, which I'm going to have to because these are going to take a day or two to dry. So that's your oil tank. These days it's just an, an ugly plastic box, but that's perfectly sealed, perfectly serviceable. You can ride the bike like that temporarily. It, uh, it's only a dress panel. Same the other side if you come around. If it's not raining and wet, which it isn't at the moment, there's nothing under there that can't live in the atmosphere just for a day or so. So I'm going to be riding it like this just for a little while, while I get the paintwork done. Okay, now we've got them in place. This is my little bench me thing. Just set myself up. Nice little painting area. Uh, so just a couple of things you need straight away. Just got some old pots and that means that can go there. Same on the other one, just a pot. Stack it up a bit. So you can put them on it and they stand off the surface. So as I'm painting, I can rotate that, get to other sides, get all around it. And it's the majority of the surface is that surface and that's flat. So there's just no point in sort of hanging them up and painting them. It's right when you haven't got any room or whatever, but to be honest, it's easier and better that way. You can float the paint out better uh, and you can just put loads of paint on and I'll come to that later on you can get a nice layup on it. The material I'm using just for this is this here very simple silver hook universal black gloss simple as that doesn't need to be anything special I was going to ramble on about paint and how much paint you get in these tins and all the rubbish this stuff that's like the remainder of the can from when I did the heel plate uh, I just use this stuff all the time it's for everything even if you just do a bracket or even if you're doing a bit of stuff welding, I don't know, something on the mower, just paint the over, stop it rusting. This stuff's two ninety nine a tin in my local kind of surplus general store, and that's brilliant. You go to a certain well-known car accessory shop, can't mention who, I think y'all know what I mean. And these guys, they just six seven fifty, I think they're charging now for a tin that size, two ninety nine. No brainer really. It's just gloss paint. Now, just one quick thing. Um, used to have a spray gun, as I said, don't bother with it anymore. Not when you're doing that much space. You have to buy half or a quarter of a litre of paint and then a litre of thinners and then a gun and a spray gun and a compressor and that's just a load of grief. Rattle cans, you can get a fantastic finish with these and I'm gonna show you that you can. I'm gonna just gloss these over, make them look nice and shiny and uh, see what they like when they're finished. We're not going to use sandpaper either because there's no body working needed on these at all. Apart from the fact they're sort of oily and a bit messy, they're going to get chemically cleaned. They're going to use just something simple like an acetone, clean all that off. Just to scuff them up, I'm just going to use the old Scotch Brights, just pan scourers, 80 pence for three. You don't need to go buy an expensive packets of sandpaper. It's not needed. All you need to do is scuff up the surface and that stuff's brilliant. Pan scourers, three, 80 pence, scuffage for the use of. No brainer really. Right, okay. So before I get started, I'm just gonna go and get some chemical wash. I've gotta take these two little clips off of here and have a little search round in my parts box for a clip for that for when I put it back on later. So let's get these prepared, start scuffing them up and get going. I just wanna <clears throat> make a point first. I'm just gonna wipe these over. Um, acetone is a great degreaser. And just before you go buying it, Get in your wife's cupboard nail varnish remover that stuff is brilliant for degreasing paintwork and it costs relatively nothing compared to proper paint degreasers uh, it's just a, a mineral based degreaser and this will do the job a treat this is the done that one this is the oil case this is that oil run down it and so on so before I start scuffing this up and then scratching any oil residue into the paint that's there I want to wipe off as much as I can so really just a bit of kitchen paper, get it nice and wet and just wipe it over, chemically dissolve the oil. Okay. Right. Time to scuff them up. Let's get some gloves. These won't take much paint off, but they will put a nice bloom on it that the paint can key to. That's all this is about. It's not about removing paint. 
and also if you make sure that when you scuff go along and none of these silly circles you'll find that if all the lines are straight in one direction the paint will lay up better you get a better finish it's a funny old business scuffing up with the scotch bright it feels like you're not doing anything it feels like it's not rubbing down but it is and because they're quite robust you can just bang them out and they'll keep going for ages they don't rub out like sandpaper does they also don't rub through and take paint off edges and corners so you don't end up with bare metal that you have to prime all round brill although when you're painting on satin paint it does tend to be easier to paint onto than gloss because the job normally of this is to break the gloss there isn't any so you just have to smooth it out and get a nice key on it, a nice scuff. As you can see, it's taking plenty of dust off there. Okay, the reason I'm wearing gloves doing this is stop the moisture from the skin, grease from your skin, from making sticky handprints. Keeps the paintwork dry. There we are. That's the two of them scuffed. So now we've just got to wash them off, get all the dust and stuff off them, and then they'll be ready for painting. Dust coming off on the cloth. So there's no particles left on the job at all. Just the idea is to get it completely dust and grease free. Okay, first is just a light tack coat, which is a really, really thin coat. Not actually designed to cover. It's just designed to lay some wet paint on. It goes tacky, just a thin tack coat. That just needs about three or four minutes to flash off, dry, before you start coating it up for real. That's it. That's the tack coat. No more than that. You're not putting a coat on. You're just laying a you're just laying a tacky finish on it that's going to float out and drift out, and it's going to form a really strong bond uh, without layering up and then reacting to anything. The first two or three coats are the ones that will react. It's a nice warm evening. It's about 14 degrees. I've just warmed the can up under the tap. If you heat the can up under a water tap. As it gets lower, it increases the pressure inside by expanding the compressed air that's left. As you run out the material, you run down the compressed air, so the paint gets blobby and splatters. But to keep it atomizing, you've just got to run them under a hot tap. Done that. There's the tack coat. It's going to give that three minutes, then start the first proper coat. First coat in anger. Okay, they're going to now take about 15 minutes to go off before the next one. So let's see what they look like then. And coat number three.
idea behind this is just layering up loads of paint. I'm not too worried about orange peel. It is a bit cool now. As the evening's wearing on, it's about 12 degrees now, so it's a little bit cooler. Possibly not warm enough anymore to be doing this. But it doesn't matter, I'm just going to lay the whole tin on between the two of them. Every 15 minutes, another coat. Let it dry right off, another 15 minutes. And when it's got loads of material on, give that a good few days to set. Then you can get the 200 paper and flatten that back. Make a lovely glossy finish. But the important thing is to get lots of material on there. So that's coat number three, another 15 minutes. All right, and there we are. Now that's six coats on each one. Quite heavy coats at points. And uh, I don't know whether you can see in this light, but there are, there we are. There's little dimples in that now. Uh, and they're caused by little particles of dust that have just been in the air. Uh, and there is a simple way around it. I'm going to stop now. I'm not going to put any more paint on. Uh, in fact, you see quite a few little dimples in that. So what I'm going to do is leave this to dry. I'm going to put it in a glass conservatory we've got. And it's going to dry over the course of from now. I mean, it's 9 p.m. at night now as well. Uh, it's getting a bit dark out there, a bit dingy. And it's about... 8 degrees now, temperature's dropping fast because the sky is clear. So these are not going to get any better. I can just keep laying up material and I'll just have to rub it off later on. So they're not going to get any better. There's six heavy coats on each one. I'm going to let them dry overnight. I'm going to put them in the conservatory and over the course of the working day tomorrow they're going to sit in the sun and the heat it gets to about 28 degrees in there during the day and that's going to bake them off a bit. And tomorrow night, provided they're hard enough, it's just a little bit of really fine paper and just flat that out to get a lovely smooth flat finish and then it will just be one or two very faint dust coats little top coats to give it a lovely glaze so that will be tomorrow so for now that's everything gotta let them dry thanks for joining Delroy's Garage see you tomorrow